Winland, uh, the lucky shed hunter that was able to pick up double beam sheds uh, this year. And just wanted to talk a little bit about them and, and the uniqueness of, uh, of this buck. Um, this is his uh, right side, I believe, right? And yep. it's hard to, hard to distinguish, obviously, yeah, his right side. Yeah. Um, which is the biggest on record, anyway, uh, as far as shed antlers go for a, for a non-typical mule deer. Um, and uh, its score is, what, what was that score on this one? 156 and 7 eighths is what it measured out as. 156 and 7 eighths. Mm -hmm. um, when he was in velvet, actually, he had a uh, sack hanging down right here, which a lot of people thought was a club, um, and it was, it was actually a part of his antler, which it wasn't. Uh, when he shed his velvet, he actually lost that blood sack, um, and it was hanging off in, in, in this vicinity right here. It actually wasn't anywhere near the end of, the drop, of, of this drop time that kind of hung down on the side of his face. Um, and so that, he lost that blood sack there, um, which a lot of people thought was, was you know, a time. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and then his, uh, his left side there, what was that score on that one? This guy's at 111 inches and, uh, you know, obviously completely different from the right side. Yeah. You know, he's got a bit of a double beam going on, but, you know, it's, it's a, it's a crazy antler in itself, completely unique, but not 156 inches. I mean, that one's the, the G way is like, it's... Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, obvi obviously, his name, uh, you know, whatever we would, what, uh, they name is Double Beam, um, and he, he actually, it's not, he doesn't have two, do two beams, uh, he just, he, he does have one base, so it's not actually mm -hmm. two different beams. Right, um, yeah, they don't come on the different pedicles. So. Yeah. Yep. But we'll show those pedicles there, they're pretty big. <clears throat> yeah. Very and, uh, so yeah, the day that, the day that you found him, um, uh, I was actually there in the vicinity, so was a buddy of mine and yeah. a couple other people too. That's for sure. And uh, and uh, you know my buddy Grant, he, he called me up, and um, it was about three o'clock, three thirty, and uh, he called me up. And he said, "Well, double beam hit the ground," and um, and we've actually heard that a couple times before that day, and uh, a couple people saying saying it on the internet and right. you know whatnot. So. I yeah. was like, oh, are you sure this time? Like, really? And, <laughs> and so, yeah. and that you know, was for sure, uh, for sure, you know, Noah called Grant. Um, and so I was, uh, I, you know, I work about 25 miles away from where this, this particular buck was uh, um, residence at. And I mean, I, I, I drove those 25 miles and that 95 miles an hour, <laughs> my truck was hitting the governor and I was going, you know, so. Yeah, we got down there about 4:30 and uh, and started looking. My my buddy Grant and I, and then um and then actually ran into Noah. And mm -hmm. what time was that? Yeah, that was probably about five o'clock when I finally saw you guys. Cause I went and you know I'd been looking for probably three hours before that, you know, and I I texted Grant and I was like, just tell me you have him, dude. Like I just wanted to know that somebody had him, you know, because our worst fears is that somebody puts him in their garage yep. and we never see him. You yeah. Know? To spend that much time looking at this deer's antlers and then not getting to hold them would just be terrible. I mean, everybody that shed hunts that, that uh, you know, is, is watching a particular animal just wants to be able to see him at least. But, yeah, so anyways, that was about 5 o'clock when I finally ran into you guys, you know. And I would say there was some anxiety and some, <laughs> you know, mixed emotions going on. We were all giddy to... To at least see them, you know, and yeah, and, uh, and, and none of us thought all, all all of us thought that they were already picked up, right. and um and and you know we conversated uh, amongst each other, and and honestly we were we would have left earlier that day uh, on an elk shed trip um, if it had not have been uh, you know for your text and and whatnot, and right. and well we kind of called it quits early that day, and uh, right after we yeah. ran into you, and and uh, so we headed down south to to find elk antlers. Right. Well, <laughs> that was that was a bad you idea. Go back and do it again. Yeah, right? I'd have stayed that day. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like after we left. Never, after we left, what happened? Yeah, you never know. I mean, there's there's so much area, you know, that that it could be in, and there's so much area that you know that that's private property that you know you kind of just have to scoot around a little bit, at, yeah. right? But yeah. you know, anyways, I went and grabbed a bite, and I still had couple hours of daylight left so you know there were times when 
this deer would disappear and you know that thoughts running through your head well maybe you know that's where he went and dropped, he dropped yeah 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 he disappeared disappeared for weeks at a time right and uh you know and everybody be looking for him and whatnot and i mean he just disappeared totally and you couldn't find him anywhere right and then all of a sudden there he was again yeah. antlers and all you know everybody yeah. thought oh he shed that's the buck that's him right there you know and and uh, you know, you would see a buck that had, that had shed, and you know, with big bases and whatnot, but it, but it just didn't have that the characteristics right. characteristics that uh, yeah, double beam has. Such a distinguishable face, baby face, yeah, a little baby face, you know. Right. So yeah. Um, yeah, so you know, I saw him that morning, even at eleven o'clock. You know, my heart just sunk. It was like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. like you knew the day was coming, <laughs> but how do you prepare yourself for it? And you just look all over, and you know, I probably had a. Five percent chance in my mind that I'd find them, but I was pretty much just like you, you know. If I would, if I would have had an elk hunting or a shed hunting trip to go to, I probably would have went. But didn't have anything going on that night, so I thought I'd look a little bit more, you know. And and uh, good thing you did. Good thing <laughs> I did, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, they're awesome, awesome sheds. His total score is uh, two forty and five eighths, correct? Yep. Two forty and five eighths uh, net, um, and then. 270 gross. Two set what well, that's with the spread. That's without a spread. Without a spread. 270 right. gross. Okay. Yeah, so 240 net. So maybe he's, you know, 290, 295, something like that with a gross and gross. A spread. Yeah. Pretty close to 300, which is a lot of people's guess, somewhere between 270 and 300. Yeah. But. Well, there you have it. That's, uh, that's a double beam right there, and uh, we're looking forward to to looking for the sheds this year maybe if he sticks around um we got yeah. some footage and some uh some video of him uh this year growing already he's uh he's alive and well and and yeah. kind of you know kicking so it'll be interesting to see what he does it'll be a fun year for sure we'll get yeah. some pictures going and and uh it was fun congratulations that's yeah that's good. the emotions going through you know my head and and my body are absolutely out of this world, you know. I had adrenaline that I've never experienced before as I'm walking up to it, you know, and my, my actual legs got a little bit weak because, you know, you obviously are never gonna find anything like this in your life and it's a once in a lifetime find. You know, I pictured finding him probably five or six times in my dream and to actually walk up on something this unique and this, um, you know, world famous almost is, is uh, hard to put into words really, you know, it's just once in a lifetime deal and, and uh, it's been a, an experience ever since. So this is the second side, um, it was sitting just like this, you know, I, I saw probably about that much of it sticking up out of the grass, probably 20, 30 yards away and knew it was the other side, you know, and I you know, I thought I'd look for the other side, but for that, you know, with that many people looking for this particular deer, you know, I thought maybe, you know, I might have a, a good chance of finding it, but at the same time, I wasn't hard pressed and, and uh, you know, super gung ho about finding the other side. I thought maybe, you know, I probably had a 50% chance of finding it, but anyways, it was sitting up just like this, I uh, walked up to it and couldn't believe it, you know, I was hard pressed to figure out which one, you know, I had more adrenaline for, was was it finding the one side or finding the set, you know, and still don't know, obviously it's amazing to have both sides to deer that's that's uh, this unique and this crazy of a, of a rack, but uh, yeah, it's been a, been a crazy ride. Hey, my name is Ron Newman, I'm an official measure for North American Shed Hunters which is becoming quite a record book. Um, when Noah found these antlers, he called me and asked me if I would score them for him, and as you can see, we, we did. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you something, I was excited when he, when he called and talked to me about it because scoring this thing is just unbelievable. Uh, when you do a radical set of horns like this, the first thing you gotta do is try and figure out the main, the main frame, you know, the typical frame which we figured out was, came up here. Okay, mm -hmm. and then you had the branch here, like a mule deer has, and then this would be um, the other point here, your G4. 
but once that's established, all the other junk, as they call it, is all non-typical. And this thing has a lot of junk, which I think is awesome. And the same with this, the left side here, which is kind of got cheated, but uh, this Probably a little more difficult on that one, huh? Yeah, this one here, I think this we, we called the main beam here. Mm -hmm. So that was your main beam or your, uh, your typical frame. And then everything else was junk. Mm -hmm. Score from there. But it's, it was exciting to do it. I really enjoyed scoring it. And uh, Noah did good. He, he did super. He got himself a, a heck of a set of horns. Double beam. Yeah. Good job. Thanks, John.